Hello students, I'll start with chemistry of elements of first transition series from today onwards. So let us see some important questions related to it. The first question as you can see on the screen, what are transition elements? So what are transition elements? These are those elements whose atoms or ions contain partially filled d orbitals. Right? The next one. Why does a transition series contain 10 elements? See, there are 5 d orbitals in an energy level. Right? There are 5 d orbitals in an energy level and each orbital contains 2 electrons. Okay, so as we move from one element to the next element, an electron is added and for complete filling of the 5d orbitals, 10 electrons are required. So on that basis, we can say that transition series will contain 10 elements. The next question, write the general electronic configuration of transition elements. So what is the general electronic configuration? Let us see, it's n minus 1 d. 1 to 10 followed by ns 0 to 2 okay the next question now name any three coinage metals are these transition metals see coinage metals are you must be aware i hope coinage metals are one is copper silver and gold the next question followed by it is are these transition metals yes all these three are the transition metals. See the last question on the screen there. Why the difference in ionization and energies of any two adjacent d block elements is not much? What could be the reason for this? See, the effect of the increased nuclear charge is balanced by the shielding effect. Whenever we want to find out the difference between the ionization energies of the adjacent elements, we need to check out for the two parameters. One is the nuclear charge and the other is the shielding effect. In case of d block elements, it has been observed that the increased nuclear charge is been balanced by the shielding effect which has an opposite trend. They are reversed to each other. On that basis, the overall difference within the ionization energy is very, very small. We'll move to next set of questions. The next question, as you can see on the screen, let's go through this. The question is, in what way the electronic configuration of transition elements is different from those of representative elements? So, electronic configuration of transition elements definitely differs from those of representative elements. What are representative elements? Those are the elements which are present in S block and P block series. So, how do they differ? Let us see. The first point. In representative elements, only the outermost shell is incomplete. Right? While in case of transition elements, the last but one shell is also incomplete. Yes or no? Because in transition elements, what happens? The electrons enter in anti-penultimate shell, the penultimate shell, that is n minus 1d series. Right? Whereas in representative elements, it enters the outermost series, that is ns or np. So that is the first basic difference. The next basic difference you can say, it's with reference to the general electronic configuration. So the general electronic configuration of the representative elements, you can say it is Ns, 1 to 2, or in terms of uh, P block series, if you want to find out, it could be Ns, uh, your 2, followed by Np, 1 to 6, right? Whereas D block electronic configuration, we have seen it right now. So these are the basic two differences. Let us see the next question. The next question is, explain why transition elements are metals. Why these are metals? See, the first point is, they have relatively low ionization energies. Okay. The second point you can say, they have small kernel size. The 
then the basic thing which we need to know whenever we are talking about the characteristics of metals is they have metallic bonding and the metallic bonding which is present in transition elements is strong so they have strong metallic bonding right all these parameters all these characteristic properties tend to show that transition elements are metals not only this additionally we can also say they are metals because they have hardness they have high density they are good conductors of heat and electricity etc etc okay so all these tendencies show that these particular elements behave as typical metals right the next one next question is why are the transition elements less reactive this is an important question again why are the transition elements less reactive due to certain reasons definitely so see the first reason here is they have high ionization energy the next one we can say they have high heat of sublimation now why they have high heat of sublimation due to the presence of covalent bonding in them okay which makes them less reactive and the third important property which we can relate with the answer is the metal ions that is the transition metal ions are not easily hydrated they cannot be hydrated easily so these are the basic three characteristics on the basis of which we can say transition elements are less reactive okay again you can go through them the first one high ionization energy high heat of sublimation due to presence of covalent bonding and the ions are not easily hydrated the next question list five characteristic properties of transition elements so what could be the five characteristic properties first could be they show variable oxidation states as we know transition elements are the elements which belong to d block series and uh, the d block elements have tendencies to show variable oxidation states so that is the first property the second uh, property we can say they are generally paramagnetic now why they are paramagnetic because when we observe their electronic configurations you can find it out they have majority of them have unpaired electrons so they are generally paramagnetic in nature the third property is they form colored ions coloration deals with the paramagnetic nature and since they have uh this unpaired electrons on the basis of which they also have a tendency to form colored ions the fourth property which we can talk about uh, say this elements have a strong tendency to form complexes yes they are less reactive that is a one aspect but they even have a strong tendency to form complexes right because they have a paramagnetic nature and there are so many other reasons associated with that they have strong tendencies to form complexes and the fifth property we can say most of the transition elements are used as catalyst right so transition elements like uh, your molybdenum chromium in its compound form with different ligands they are act they do act as very good catalyst in different kinds of chemical reactions so these are the five basic properties associated with transition elements the last question there zinc and cadmium are not considered transition metals why we can just try to recollect just try to find it out what can be the reason see zinc and cadmium the last elements of the transition series first transition series and the second transition series then so basically transition elements are characterized by the presence of vacant or half filled d orbitals right so whenever i say any transition element i mean there should be a vacant or a half filled d orbital but however in case of zinc and cadmium they have completely filled d orbitals and that's the reason 
they are normally not considered as transition metals right so that's for today thank you for watching